Well, what we're going to do today, we're just going to look at some sporting uh, things that have happened. We're going to look at a financial benefit that a lot of you can obtain. And probably it's not been heavily publicised, so I'll try and identify some free money for you. And we'll talk about the markets and then we'll take some questions and answers from you. So just starting off with the sporting uh, situations at the moment, you've got the Premier League now that have basically agreed to go behind closed doors because they realise there's major problems with the government even going to allow people to go to sporting events. But we still have boxing clinging on, trying to think that they're potentially going to be able to do public events in June or July, which I just cannot see for the life of me. I just wish boxing would be as open as football is, and football are just saying, look, it's, there's no way it's happening, but boxing is just clinging on and clinging on, um, and there's just no possible way, in my opinion, that can happen. Um, obviously, the good news from that today is there has been a scientist at Oxford University who thinks 80% sure she has a cure and thinks it could be September. So there is some hope that there could be an exit strategy medically, which is obviously what we need for sporting events. But that's, uh, we'll know more about that over the next week or two. As far as uh, finances are concerned, um, the big news this week, or a bit of good news, and shame to you, Barclay Card, is that Barclay Card were amongst the credit card lenders that were refusing to give people three month holidays from paying their credit cards. It was a voluntary thing that the government allowed, but Barclay Card were refusing no matter what to offer that to its customers. So on Thursday, the government made it law. So every single loan company, every single credit card company now has to give you a three month payment holiday. But I would stress, do not take these holidays if you can afford to pay because the interest will compound and you will pay it back with interest. But if you are genuinely struggling now, they have to give you three months off. And uh, if you do it the right way, it should not affect your credit rating. That's whether it's a mortgage, a credit card or a loan. Um, another thing that you need to do at the moment is possibly reassess your mortgages if they are coming up. If you've got um, these, some of these shorter term deals where the deals are due to be renewed. Um, potentially before some of these deals disappear you could possibly lock into a deal um, and make sure that your mortgage broker or lender uh, has a situation where if the deal improves you could jump onto that and uh, so therefore you can have the best of both worlds. Um, I have written a big thing about mortgages in the last two weeks in my weekly uh, letters that I write to my clients um, but uh, that's in much more detail but I would say to you have a good look at your mortgages uh, and make sure that whoever is advising you does have the in-depth knowledge to be able to, to help you with that. Um, as far as investments are concerned this week, um, we've seen the second in three weeks where markets have gone up. Now, we get all the publicity where markets have fallen and I know that people that have got investments out there are panicking and, and obviously at this point in time people's lives people don't need that if you have if you're watching this and you have a financial advisor then you should really have received contact from them either text an email a phone call um, something like that because it's very important that um, that you are kept abreast of what's going on make sure you're in the right type of fund and make sure you're you're in the right place at this particular moment um, in your financial uh, journey uh, because it's very important you understand exactly what's going on. Now, why has the markets, why have the markets gone up this week when in effect all we're hearing is bad news? Reason number one, there is increasing optimism, optimism that the containment strategies are working. Not so much in the, the UK, um, I mean, we're not, but worldwide, Spain and Italy seem to have got a grip of it. Um, Denmark, Czech Republic and Austria are now talking about lifting the lockdown to varying degrees. Denmark is still going to restrict um, gatherings to 10 people. But these sorts of indicators do help the market because they do feel there's a potential way out. Another thing that helped the US market was the Ber that Bernie Sanders pulled out of the uh, race to become the Democratic candidate. Now, irrelevant to your political viewpoint, Sanders was viewed as the American Jeremy Corbyn damaging to the markets. So when he pulled out and gave a free, a free run to Joe Biden, that therefore, I think the markets were up 3% as soon as uh, Bernie Sanders removed his candidacy. China also relaxed its restrictions in Wuhan. Obviously, you can't believe everything that you get from China, but that also helped the market. And the US Federal Reserve gave a 2.3 trillion 
uh, dollar help to local government and business. So that again helped the market in America. And finally, the Bank of England extended its overdraft facility to the UK government, which is where the Bank of England, to a certain extent, are helping out uh, fund the crisis until it gets there. And that hasn't happened in, in a substantial term since 2008. Now, all of these measures this week have all helped the markets rise once again. Um, but what we don't know at the moment is whether it is a sustainable recovery or it is a temporary rise before we fall once again. And that's something that, that's not that we nobody knows for sure. But the next week will be very, very important for me, the next week with the markets, because will they, will they therefore take a grip and still hold the momentum of going forward, or will we see a backward uh, period? But whatever fund you're invested in, whatever investment you're invested in, you need to be sure that you understand the level of risk and the potential losses that that investment um, will, will, uh, will hold. What I want to talk to you about now, uh, before I take questions, is the issue of being able to claim some money back uh, from the government. Now this applies to those of you that have been asked to work from home. Not obviously uh, in terms of uh, furloughing, because furloughing is where you're given money and told not to work. So this applies to limited company directors in effect, and if you're working for a bank or Tesco's or anybody else who's asked you to work from home. Now there is, a ta there is a, a, an allowance for working from home, which the revenue understand, because they understand that should you work from home, you've got costs. You've got costs of electricity, or whatever, where was it at home. Now, you can formulate um, a costing of how much it is, but the revenue to simplify it will give a flat rate of six pounds per week. Now, what you can do and you're entitled to do, is you're entitled, and we'll start in two stages here, to ask your employer to give you that money. Some employers might not want to do it, but a lot of employers do, and they will pay you six pounds extra per week in your, um, in your pay for working from home. Should you not want to ask your employer because you feel embarrassed to, or should they refuse, you can actually claim the tax relief back even if you're not receiving the benefit by going, by foot, by going through a, situ a thing online with the Inland Revenue and filling a form in. Now it's covered to my clients in, in a, the newsletter that I've sent out today. Should any of you need any help with this, drop me a private message and I'll give you some and I'll send you through the instructions how to do it. But even if the employer doesn't give it to you, and you don't even have to ask your employer for this, you can claim the tax relief back at either 20% or 40% from the inland revenue. So it's free money. It's not a fortune of money, but it's free money. So it's not widespreadly known that you can do this. Now, if you are a company director and, you, uh, and you're working from home, you have an office, you are entitled to claim that. So you can pay yourself from your limited company that amount of expenses, and it is a tax deductible expense for the limited company, and you yourself do not have to pay tax on that benefit. So that is a very, very important thing for you to do. I'm going to try and bring you weekly the odd tip like that that you can use. But as I say, I'm more than happy to help you send me a private message on Facebook or by email, and I'll give you the instructions uh, on that. Now, before we go on to the questions, I need to thank my daughter, Olivia, who does a lot of work. She sets this all up, does a great job behind the camera, uh, despite the uh, failing internet at times. So without, she's the one that sets this all up for me. So I do appreciate all her help. She's here once again on a Saturday night. Um, but Olivia, do we have any questions? Yeah, yeah, we've got now. So we've got Tim Brown. He says, evening, Steve. Hope Bye, you are Tim. well. I'm not sure if you can answer my question or not, but if you managed a boxer who had a world fight, world title fight, yeah. where would you advise them to put the money so they don't waste it? Well, that would be, that's an individual advising perspective. I mean, that's no different to advise a boxer as I would a client who's got money. And one thing that you should always do if you're investing money is you should have a, a range of assets within your risk profile. And so therefore, every client is slightly different and you will devise a profile to make sure that the money is protected, they get growth, um, because some investments, for example, can have zero risk, but you may have to tie the money up. Some investments you can have immediate access to, but you undertake a level of risk. So everybody is different in what they want to achieve, but what we do with all of my clients over 30 years, we aim for longer term growth, uh, whilst getting the lowest risk reward 
um, and we would just generally do that. But in, in terms of specifics, you can never say what you're going to invest in because every single person is different and you'd spend hours getting to understand that client before you make a formal recommendation. Okay, and we've got Karina says, will you be putting Jack Punk Hughes v Prince Brady on one of your first bills back? And she's put laughing faces and the monkey hands over the eyes. Well, none of them, Jack's, ret Jack's retired and uh, I think Prince Brady has disappeared. He's just not boxing anymore. So they're not, uh, they're not two, but I have got a very, very good fighter at that weight and that's Sam Cox. So... Uh, Sam Cox, he is one of my favourite fighters of all, of all the fighters I have. Wonderful young man, does a lot of work, he's delivering. We just give a shout out to Sam actually because he's doing a lot of deliveries to food, to hospitals for people. He's working hard in the gym, he's had a lot of heartache in his personal life. He's a wonderful, wonderful human being. And big shout out to Sam who probably at the moment is dropping stuff off to hospital. So big up Sam. But he's a really good uh, flyweight super flyweight and he'll be winning titles okay and we've got dave evans my Do man you... <laughs> sorry i messed your question up last week dave again internet it doesn't help living with all these trees as you can see in the background um do you think many boxers will retire after the enforced break i think there's quite a few i've been speaking to quite a few trainers um over the last couple of weeks i think a lot of box some boxers will become journeymen i haven't covered this before and I think some will retire because when you are fighting at a small hall level, unless you're going to get to the top of that tree, there's not enough money in it for you. So I think some boxers may reflect because a, a journeyman will earn, a general journeyman will earn more money than probably 95, 95% of boxers who fight on the left hand side of the card. So if people are struggling to get jobs outside boxing, if the economy is a little bit more damaged, then you may find boxers who want to fight away. So I think that'll be the first thing that happens. But yes, I think there will be an amount of boxers who say, well, that's enough for me. I'd rather go on with something else in my life. I think that's going to be a natural result of what we're going through at the moment. Okay, we've got Steve Kipps. He says, can teachers working from home preparing daily online coursework claim this tax relief from Inland Revenue? Yes, Steve, you can claim that. <clears throat> okay. Um, but, then, by the way, Steve, give me a call and I'll, I'll, run through, I'll run through it with you. But yes, you can do that. You've just got to put a claim. If the, if the educational authority don't want to pay you, which they should, then you can still claim the tax relief back online and I'll run through with you what you do for that. Okay, and we've got Martin Theobald. He says, given the financial upon the public potential job losses etc will promoters have to reconsider the cost of a ticket to shows also as a knock-on do you think boxes will have to potentially accept lower purses as a result either purse or value to ticket deal cheers i'm glad the wi-fi is holding up yeah. well let's deal with Martin the purses so the purses at the higher level are going to shrink because i do not see at the moment that you're going to get mass mass audiences to boxing so I think people that have been getting, I don't know, let's go 60 grand, 70 grand for a British title fight will probably have to be accepting 20 or 30. So I think at that level they will do that. Now it's a bit more problematical at Small Hall because there's an amount of money that each boxer needs to sell to cover the cost of the fight and that isn't going to change whatever the ticket price is. So the question that that is, the boxer, what it may mean is boxers rather than earning two thousand pounds or two and a half thousand pounds may be struggling to break even because they may be struggling to sell tickets um again a lot's gonna depend on how quick we get a medical cure and how damaged a lot of people are financially from this so it's gonna be a very difficult thing but they are all issues now dropping ticket prices doesn't really achieve anything in, in the small hall because it means the box has to get more bodies to the event because doctors charge a fortune the board take money you've got security costs they're not going to reduce event costs are not going to reduce um, referees judges ambulances aren't going to reduce so if you reduce a ticket it could make it unviable for promoters to stay shows the margins are so so tight but yeah i think there's going to be a lot of changes and i think we're not going to know at this stage exactly what they're going to be okay and we've got richard greg he says hello steve hope Hi, all is well just a thought for the future. TV is big for building boxer profiles. 
Do you ever plan to make Goodland Books in a live channel for shows via YouTube or Facebook, etc., as you promote the best small hall shows in the country? Would be great for more people to see what you're doing. Right, the, it's a really good point, that. Um, the issue that you've got with this is when we've done some studies, and, and obviously anybody that know, knows me and what I do for my, my living, what I make my money from, knows that I'm quite hot on the finances and statistics. We've done studies of people that put shows on the internet. And what you've got to do is, let's say for example, somebody puts a show on the internet and somebody tunes in for 10 seconds and they tune in for another minute. That will count as two views. And so what you've got to look at is how many people are watching at any one time. And I've watched the numbers on that. They're not that great. No matter who puts them on, the numbers are not good. And it's okay people saying I've had 20,000 views at the end of it, but it's not really 20,000 individual views. Now, if you're not getting that many views, then you're not going to get advertisers to give you money for doing it. And if you put small hall shows on the internet, what you're going to get is a load of boxers fans saying, I won't buy a ticket, I'll just sit at home and watch my mate fight on a live stream. So unless they're going to pay for it, it doesn't make any sense. So it's a great idea, but you would need a really big, a lot of numbers of people watching it to make it viable to do it. Otherwise, all that happens is the promoter loses money and the boxer loses a lot of ticket sales as well. So that's the answer. It's a brilliant idea, but I've, I've not found a way to do it in practice. Okay, Martin is back again. He says, Steve, Lockdown Lowdown is a great name for a show. Are you concerned any other promoters may copy it? Well, it's been copied, <laughs> as Martin knows. Uh, Frank Warren and uh, Queensby Promotions are actually using the same terminology uh, dev who does their marketing has announced it uh, he said uh, i think martin pulled him on it and they just said um oh, they didn't realize we were using it so we haven't got a copyright to it so imitation is the best form of flattery i guess so let them crack on and um, john mccallum says good to see you steve mate Hi, john. hope you and the family are well how long do you think the economy will take to bounce back after this covid19 also, who do you think is the best light heavyweight in the world? Bivol or Betaviv? Okay, um, I'll answer that very quickly. Bivol, I think, is the best. I think Bivol is the best light heavyweight in the world. Uh, the economy, the bouncing back will depend a lot on the medicine. Uh, it depends on how quickly we can safely do everything. Um, if we're waiting 18 months before we can safely engage and do everything, it will take a lot longer. We'll have more of a U-turn than a V-turn. V um, but I'm hoping, I mean, we've got to look at the positives. I'm hoping that the professor in Oxford, who was responsible for helping up um, the Ebola vaccine, and she's 80% sure she's got something. And I'm hopeful that if that's right, we could not have a prolonged period of economic instability. And I think boxing is one of those... Uh, industries that could suffer more than most because of the crowd because when we go to York Hall it's very 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 rammed in for example and people are close together and I think things like pop concerts um, and theatres and things like that are going to suffer so we've got to really rely on the medicine to help us I think it's really hard to say how long because I think a lot of that's going to depend on the medicine and you know because other than that you know even if they flatten the curve and we all go back out or people go back out walking. if we have a situation where um we're getting reported 100 or 200 deaths a day and it's reported every day people are to be scared to go out there and mix with uh, mix with the public and that is really where the biggest problem lies is that confidence of people is not going to be restored until they feel that if they do get this virus that they can be actually treated and that's the important thing from this so I think the, the question of that comes down to medicine if not the economy will recover it will just take longer okay and sorry for the Instagram live the phone just dropped on the floor because I read the message I scrolled through and I've just laughed so much I put too much pressure on the phone it just said born in Islington he come on last week he said Steve Promoters out there, the bigger promoters. Are, We're back live on um, Facebook. The bigger promoters are not being totally realistic in their expectations. Facebook, thanks for coming back again. Right, so, up. right, I'm giving up on the Instagram. <laughs> right, there was a question on Instagram. It said, Hi, mate, how are you doing? Who's the next 
big star you have coming up? From our point of view, the, the next biggest star that we have, I think you've got to say, are the ones that are furthest along their careers. Dion Juma at Cruiserweight, he's got a British title fight lined up against Reactor. I think Dion is super talented. Linus Udofia is a middleweight, he's English champion. K Price, super lightweight. It's a big, big fight, and he's, he's going to have to get away from the British title. Leon Juma is the closest, and I think he wins the British title and goes beyond that. So I would say you've got to say it's Dion Juma. Okay. And we've got Phil Williams. He says, sat in my ambulance now on standby watching this. Can you have him? Can you believe we haven't been called out in the last 10 minutes? Stay safe, mate. Yeah, now, Phil, Phil's one of Box's great guys. I love Phil. He's a, he's a journeyman heavyweight. He fights. Whenever you call him, he's ready to fight. He's a proper man, and he's out there helping now with the ambulances. And big, big respect to Phil, who's out there now doing the best. And I'm glad you haven't had a call for 10 minutes, Phil, and I hope that the amount of calls you get do diminish. Um, hopefully this is all going to work and we can get our lives back to some sort of normality and you can get back in the ring and uh, full credit and respect for you Phil I look forward to speaking to you Monday on Instagram live where we can't wait to speak to you on Monday it'd be brilliant ok and we've got Will Michael Steve are you doing your next show in Saudi recoup some of that and he's put the little dollar sign <laughs> yeah well we won't, be, we won't be recouping anything in Saudi Arabia but um, I think we'll just be we're looking forward to doing the next show that we do but time scale wise realistically you've got to say the earliest possible is september and that's probably unlikely at this stage i think so i think we've covered all the questions and answers for today um we'll be back next next saturday at 6 30 with more questions more answers boxing financial sports to answer you hope you've enjoyed the good weather because the weather's been great out there so I hope many of you have probably watched this on Catchback because you're probably enjoying the sun in your gardens. So thanks very much for watching. Stay safe, everybody, and we'll see you next week.